but with me, I'm able to still incorporate movements and, and ble- be that, that fluid um, aspect. Mm-hmm. And once that happened, you know, the rest is history and it, it took off and everybody's like, oh my God, you're, you're Swan, you're the Black Swan. I'm like, hi. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling network on the planet. Bonjour, you're watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. My name is TK Trinidad, and of course, we have nothing but an amazing show with nothing but amazing guests. She is the best of the West women's champion. Please welcome the Black Swan herself, Zoe Dubois. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I am wonderful as well. Um, I always like to start with a fun question, not get all the way into the wrestling. Um, I mean, being the Black Swan, I, I, I got the, the privilege, privilege to watch you wrestle um, in Philly. Um, being the Black Swan, it seems like there's a mystique about you. It also seems like you don't have fun. And I know you have fun. So what does the Black Swan and or Zoe do for fun? Oh, so I grew up being an outdoor streets. I love, I love hiking. I love camping, um, rock, rock climbing. I, w- I was the one that wasn't scared of no bugs and, <laughs> and went around everywhere. But I'm also, um, I grew up reading a lot. So I have a whole bookshelf of everything. And I think sci-fi or at least historical fiction is my favorite genre. So if if I have time, because there's only 24 hours of, of a day, and I manage mm-hmm. to make up 22 of those hours doing something <laughs> at least. But whenever uh, I do get the relaxing time or some downtime, I'd love to read a book or at mm-hmm. least get away from the city or just the drama of everywhere and have my uh, five seconds of silence. That's what I like yeah. to say. Ah, I like it. I like it. I, I too love to read books. Unfortunately, same thing. Life is just lifing. So <laughs> I broke at one point, <laughs> one point I thought like, you know, people who listen to audiobooks they're just lazy. And then I actually started listening to audiobook. And I'm like, this is amazing because you get the, especially if the person's reading the book. I can't wait to dive oh. into uh, Becky's book and R- Rhonda's book, especially if the person's reading the book. Like, it's like, this is, this is amazing. And you can still mon- multitask. I, you know, I, I well, I'm, like, girl, there's been times when my brain like zones out and all of a sudden I'm on, I'm on chapter six. With those other oh, books. well, that's I'm not, like, that's wait. not a good book. Like, that's I mean, true. sorry, that's sorry, true. Brittany, that happened to your book, but uh, Harry Potter, yo, that, that guy, whoever he was, was reading the book. He had me. I was like his voice. I was like, mm-hmm. I can fall asleep to this. This is great. This is let me dream of of you know about a cadaver. Yeah, it was and crazy, I, and it was it was also scary at the like I. Now we're going to start. It's a Harry Potter tangent, but it was also it was also scary because it's just like every single book because I I waited. Um, I didn't get into the Harry Potter thing until like after everything was said and done. So I did the books mm. all back to back, and every single book. They're trying to kill this little boy. And I'm like, children are reading this? This is not, <laughs> this is not okay. <laughs> so what did we learn, kids? Everyone's trying to kill you. Because- <laughs> Everyone's trying to kill you. Um, so um, fun fact, just don't read or watch the movies back to buck. It doesn't do well for your psyche. Trust me. I had to like, by book five, I had to take a break. I was like, why am I so antsy? Because somebody's <laughs> trying to kill Harry and therefore somebody's trying to kill <laughs> But I love um, that's that's one of the best books when you completely absorb yourself, even if you're mm-hmm. going on a marathon of, of reading or even yep. looking at, at the movies to even compare from the books, because you know the books are always better. Yes. Always better. Always better. So when you can get so invested into a book, it's 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 not rare to do it, but because when you find that good book, you know, mm-hmm. and only book gurus kind of know, because you know some people they just don't like words. But I remember I even read a book and I had to put it down multiple times because I couldn't stop crying. Oh, it, no. It was, it was called The Book Thief. It was, it was an assignment from like uh, high school or college. But I remember when I read it, like near the end, I was sobbing and I was so invested in it. I was so enthralled. I'm like, no, don't die. Wake up. <laughs> I mean, and yeah, I agree with you. That's like always like the the good books and or a really good promo. 
like somebody who does a good promo. It's just like, I mean, I love the, don't get me wrong. I love the wrestling. I do. I really do. But I think a really, like I'm the promo girl. Like I love a really good promo that you tell the story. And then it's like almost playing, Um, I think like, um, it's so crazy. I think they call it like the dozens where it's like, you're kind of insulting the person. Um, it's just like, I really like when, when they have a really good one where it's just like, Ooh, that was a little close to home, but that was really good. Um, <laughs> I, I love it. It's, it's art. It's art. That's, that's well, the amazing thing. I a hundred percent agree with you. Cause with a promo, you have maybe 30 seconds at most. Mm-hmm. You could do a minute and a half, maybe two minutes for pushing it. And you have mm-hmm. to, one, gain the audience's attention. Two, have the setting, the theme, the scenery, the mood of everything that is going to happen. Mm-hmm. And three, make them still desire to keep on watching it. So you have all yep. of these three things in such a short amount of time. Like, you can't just say, like, hey, on this day, I'm going to be beating this person up. Hard, hard, hard. You suck. I'm better. No. Right. Everyone's going to be like, that's full of phony. That's not going to work. So with a promo how how do you capture an audience how how do you capture somebody's attention especially if like they're scrolling mm-hmm. maybe they're looking at it for five seconds how do you capture somebody in five mm-hmm. seconds that is yep. and that that's the purity of of promos as well yeah all the little aspects the li- it's all the little things um within wrestling i guess uh outside as far as entertainment that make up that big package which comes to you i saw your picture um I was kind of going through your stuff because we, like I said, um, I saw Zoe at All Caribbean Wrestling. So shout outs to All Caribbean Wrestling. I saw you, um, have a, you had a match there, but I saw you at Mission Pro, but I didn't see your match at Mission Pro. I saw the pictures and I was like, this is different. I like this. Um, so, so many questions. Um, that like, it's kind of, I, I love interviews like this. Cause like I have a list of questions and I don't follow any of them because there's just so many good things. Um, but you made reference to, um, we have a couple, couple things in common and a lot of wrestlers have this as well. You made reference to being an introvert and I find it so crazy because there are quite a few wrestlers who are introverts, but you're an introvert, but then you, you now are on this stage per se, like, and, and you put yourself there. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm an introvert. Like, no, like you chose to dance. You chose to, you, you chose stuff that is still kind of interacting with people. So mm-hmm. how do you, like, how do you navigate that? So I think I've been, at least for, for myself, I'm, I'm an introvert, extrovert. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm very big on energy. I try, if I make a joke, whether it's something about a subject or me, if you laugh at it, that means we're good. That means we can, <laughs> we can vibe. If not, then it's, it's just going to go downhill. But, um, and even when I was younger, like in the second grade, when first time meeting my uh, teacher, I was hiding behind my dad's leg the entire time. I was so shy and so nervous. But my mom, she is the most expressive and, and beautiful spirit you can ever meet. And, and she will she will talk your ear off about anything and everything. But, you know, and even after second grade, I, my third grade teacher, she was loud and vibrant and, and I consider her a cool person. I always, I always wanted to be a cool kid. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, I'm going to portray that personality. Mm-hmm. And I, and I kind of fed into it, but I, I'm not one that will go up to people and be like, hey, how you doing? You know, you have to come to me to talk. And then I will I will gladly have a conversation. Mm-hmm. But um, with dance growing up, you're in your own box. With dance, you don't necessarily break the fourth wall. And that's mm-hmm. the, um, the the wall between the stage and the audience. That's what mm-hmm. in, in theater, that's what we call the fourth wall. So you don't really get to see the faces you don't get to you know look at any people like all the eyeballs because the lights are so bright and Mm -hmm. you're worried about doing 27 things at the same time so with that I was able to just be free and and just live in my own world with it Mm -hmm. and now that I'm in wrestling you know of course we have to break um that barrier and and we interact with with your audience you interact with your fans or your opposers and it's still I would say I'm I'm still just as as 
like a little nervous, a little introvert because mm-hmm. talking to people or going up to somebody and staring at them and me with my red eyes, they they either do a double look or they'll they'll back up a little bit or they're like, <gasps> you have, your eyes are red. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. But when I'm, I'm in my gear and, and my face is on and when I'm behind the curtain, my music plays, my whole life, is is disappeared and I'm mm-hmm. not who I am. I am black I am you know black swan. I am Zoe Dubois about to present, have a performance and you know whoop somebody while still being pretty at it. And I think that's what happens like right before I step out of those curtains, my brain just shuts down and I just I listen to the music and I let who I am trying to present myself completely consume me and take over and and I hope that you know it, it's it's reciprocated the same way it resonates yeah so would you say that almost like the black swan is like Sasha Fierce like that same thing <laughs> in a way as, as, as like an alter ego yeah mm-hmm. She's a, um, she has this independency to her and it's mm-hmm. I always say in my entrance that um, I am the bewitcher of hearts because I am trying to, I'm not one who who talks a, a lot in the ring or outside the ring. I'm not one that's like, yeah, come on, let's, mm-hmm. let's go. Like an early 2000s um, workout teacher. Right. But, but no offense to anyone who does. Um, I am very much of like, words can only do so much. So watch me what I do. Right. And, and now, hmm. what are you going to say? Oh, I'll say, I was like, and, and with that, um, it's definitely a, a different game to translate what you're trying to say without any words and just through your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's an, the, another thing. So, you know, background for 20 plus years. And so now you go into wrestling. Um, was it as far as it's kind of a two-parter, the, the performance element of it all? Was it an easy transition for you? Because, you know, when you're on stage, so, and I hate when people do this. So let me know if you hate this too. Um, I did ballet when I was a kid. I did it till I was like 15 years old. Um, So it's just kind of like you learn how to work the stage, you know, the angles and all this other stuff, but it also kind of, um, you can transition it into other things. So did you find, you know, because you've done it for so long on so many different, platforms and stuff like that, that when you went into wrestling, you can now essentially work the ring and work the crowd. Was that, was, is that the same or was it something totally different? I would say it's, it's not identical, but it is very, very similar. Um, I always like to express that what I've noticed, especially between the two of of dancing and wrestling is that they're both on the same wavelength. They're Mm -hmm. just on opposite spectrums because with, dance you know it's difficult it's it's very challenging but we make it look elegant and and weightless and and completely graceful and with wrestling I'm not saying it's easy (laughs) not but (laughs) compared to to dance I would say it's a little bit on the on the easier side with um mechanics and whatnot but we um or no it's it, it it is yeah it is easy but we make it look we over exaggerate it, so we make it look a little bit harder. But mm-hmm. I'd say the only difference between the two is is the breaking of the fourth wall, and you actually need the audience to help you grow, to give you that life, to give you that that motivation, and encouragement. With dance, we wait till the end of the whole ballet to mm-hmm. get the applaud, and that's where right. we know it's beautiful when the audience is completely silent because they're so invested in it and so just in awe. Mm-hmm. So with wrestling. You, you have those moments of silence too. You, you have to hear like the difference between like, oh, it's silent because they're not really invested in it. And right. they're silent because they are so involved in just what is happening. And you hear you hear the chants, you, you hear the, the critiques, you hear the oohs and the ahs, and that's how you could kind of play along with it. Um, mm-hmm. But for presentation wise I, I don't think there's there's that much of a difference I'm still doing 
you know, some dancing. I'm doing some 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 bad dancing. Don't tell my my director or <laughs> my, my old dance teachers that it's it's not necessarily the bees knees of of right. ballet with my entrance, but um, I still get that movement. And because at least from what I've heard, not a lot of people have been introduced to um, ballet, especially in the wrestling world. Mm-hmm. That it's I don't. I feel like they don't know if they like it or not, so they're just going to keep on watching. Right. To see. It's definitely different. Yeah. (laughs) They're like, oh, we're supposed to, you know, see people beat up each other, and here, here's this lady dressed in black doing some twirls. (laughs) And and so that, like, your your costume um, or your gear, I should say, um, because you, I, I believe you do go on point. So, like do you have that in your like are you wrestling in ballet shoes or what what it were that's that's the willpower of my strength and my feet (laughs) wait what no Uh doing years of years doing hundreds of thousands of of uh what what is it called in ballet we call it elevates but like calf raise yeah calf raises there it is yeah, and going on my toes. There's a little support in the um, shoe that I that I wear, my wrestling shoe. Right. But yeah, that's that's girl. That's on my feet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, like I'm my feet hurt just thinking about that. Because I thought, okay, like she has the point. Because I remember at one point, um, I don't know if they still do this. You have the wood at the tip of your, of the tip of your ballet shoes. So it's not wood. It's actually paper mache. Mm. The the um flank in the shoe is actually that's wood uh-huh. so that's what makes up of of a point shoe a point shoe yeah they have this cup of of a paper mache and then they have a uh-huh. plank of wood at bottom at the bottom and of course progressively over time you no know, uh depending on how strong your feet are as well the paper mache will get soft so that's why we need like jet glue or some um gorilla glue to ho- oh the amount of times that i <laughs> I would glue my point shoes to make sure they last just a little bit longer. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. But yeah, you need strong feet, uh, especially for, for point. And my old dance teacher, she would say that um, at the age of 12, that's when I started point uh, as well. That's when uh, someone's foot is fully developed. Mm-hmm. And of course there, there are some professionals that, that have done it way before. And, and that's what I'm not saying it's, it's mm-hmm. not against, but that's, that's a great way, a great year to start. And with that, I had to do ankle exercises. I had to do a lot of calf raises and ankle supports just to make sure, because you're you're dancing on this tiny little mm-hmm. box. So, and all your weight is on your big toe. So everything is just smushed. That's why Ooh. dancers don't have pretty feet. <laughs> but um, yeah, you get a really good sense of your center of, of gravity and where you need to pull up and push down and pull up and turn out this way, but go the other way and go inside out and your outsides are in. And it's, it, it. it's, you, I, I, you know what? I, I was about to say that too. It's beautiful because um, especially, I mean, starting at a young age, it's like you're training your body, right? Like the positions and holding it and all the things it's just like you're you're training your body, and it was a really great. Um, it helped me with other things, with sports and everything like that. Because it was oh, you take dear. the cues, you like because you have to hold the position, or you have to dance a certain way. Like everything is very regimented, and mm-hmm. I gravitate towards stuff like that. Like you know, I can do you know with ballet, it transitioned to track, but I was a sprinter, so I very much you know that first ten meters was everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you're always concentrating on everything. So like ballet is just such a, such a beautiful, um, such a beautiful art. And then you try, like you look at other dance forms as well, but I don't know, ballet is just always near and dear to my heart. I'm um, just how everything kind of is shaped. Um, but with that being said, you went from ballet to wrestling. What was that first bump like? <laughs> uh, I did it wrong. <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> um, so story time. Let me let me give you the deets of, <laughs> of how how I got into wrestling because it was very out of of nowhere. And mind you, I did not grow up watching wrestling at all. None of my folks did. My my family, we are lovers. We're not fighters. 
Um, my mama was a dancer before me, and my dad worked stagehand, and that's how they met. So we oh, we nice. just a, a a family of uh, uh, music, art, theatrical, bumble Artsy. grumble of everything. <laughs> yeah. Um. So two ish years ago in J- January of. 2022 I believe um I was still in my dance company that I was a part of for uh seven years I was the rehearsal director for a company called Contemporary West Dance Theater Mm -hmm. and um beautiful beautiful career is, is my my professional uh life right there but I was working a third party convention and it was outside of Vegas and it since it was January it was cold and it was at night and desert. I'm a desert rat I don't I don't do that I don't do the cold I'm good <laughs> but um they had different stations set up and you know they were it was like in a theme park event ish so they had like padded boxing they had like a zip line and we were able to host whatever we wanted for the night so I was walking around and I saw a sign that said bear wrestling I'm like well if I'm gonna entertain my or be out here for the night I'm gonna entertain myself and I'm gonna have fun (laughs) so another girl uh, named Lehua and I we we sat up and uh, there was this janky wooded box that had some carpet from the school on it they had some not really good ropes it was it was just a box <laughs> and <laughs> girls just about it wasn't even a good ring and there was um a couple of wrestlers there and there was one wrestler that was actually dressed up as a bear and mm-hmm. his name was is cal jack and he used to go by uh grizzly cal jack or even cal um cal bishop when he was mm-hmm. in uh, wwe for a second and, you know, he he wrestled with the, the vets that were there. And during the breaks, we got to chit chat and we were the hype of the night. Everybody wanted to be around us and we were screaming and chanting. And Lehu and I agreed. We're like, once it hits nine o'clock and we clock out, we getting in that ring. Oh, wow. So, okay. oh, yeah, we were <laughs> we were so pumped with everything that was going on. We we're like, we want to be a part of it. Okay, okay, okay. So... <laughs> So nine o'clock struck, we got in the ring, we wrestled the guys for a little bit, we wrestled each other for a little bit, and Cal came up to us, and he's like, hey, do you guys want to come to training just one day, you know, we'll be free, try it out, and I I said, why not? I'm like, if I don't like it, then I know. If I do, I don't know what I'm about to do, but, you know, um, growing up, I, I don't have a younger brother, I have an older brother and a younger sister. But um, my childhood friend that I, I have for years, she had a younger brother and her younger brother had a best friend. So I would used to wrestle and try to be the, the tough one with them and try to be like, I'm stronger than I look. I'm macho. <laughs> you know, I'm petite and <laughs> wearing flowers. But um, yeah, I, tr- I went to a training day in March, I think in the end of, at the end of March. And I did my roles. Um, I, I rolled around or threw around like a 300 pound dude. I felt super strong. And then I saw a practice match after and there was no red flags for this. I, okay. girl, I don't know. It was like, I, nothing told me don't do it. I was like, okay, I can keep on doing this. And I kept on going back. I kept on going to training classes and then um, I started to pay and I went up to my folks or I met up with my folks and I told my mom and dad, I'm like, hey, what what, what would you guys think if I started wrestling, pro wrestling? And my mom said, no, she she was completely out of it. She was like, what are you right. doing? This is, this, <laughs> where did this come from? Um, my dad, he didn't say no but he didn't say yes right so I went with yes (laughs) and and because because he didn't say no he gave me like the nickname he's like hey think about it the badass ballerina or babe for short and you know (laughs) I looked at my dad I'm like we can put a pin in it you know it's possible let's just let's just put a pin in it Uh (laughs) because uh, the more I went to training 
you know, we would try submissions and we would try all, all these things. And I'll be like, oh, this is a nice stretch for me. Or I would joke around and pretend to almost kick their, uh, their face. It's like, you could get your leg up that high. You could, you could do halua kicks and you could do all these things. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, so I'm just going to be leggy. I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> um, so I'm like, so I, I, I still wanted to incorporate uh, ballet into this because ballet is such an old love of mine. This is, it's, it's a part of who I am. Um, and I was thinking of all the, the actual ballets that are happen and with the antagonist or protagonist that are in, mm-hmm. you know, we have uh, Romeo and Juliet, we have, um, we do have Swan Lake, you know, we have Sleeping Beauty, we have all these beautiful ballets. And I was thinking, I'm like, okay, I'm not Maleficent. And when I came across Swan Lake, I'm like, okay, there's an antagonist, uh, Black Swan. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, when they see me, they reference the movie with Natalie Portman. I mean, I I did that. That's the first thing I thought. Yeah. You are not wrong. That movie, Black Swan, shows the behind the scenes of the actual ballet, Swan Lake, Mm -hmm. and how to become this persuasive, graceful, seductive uh, woman. Mm-hmm. compared to the white swan which is pure and elegant and the the differences so I, I was looking at it I'm like okay black swan that would be a beautiful gimmick and I wanted to be silly too and I'm just mm-hmm. like you know I may be light-skinned but you know black swan I mean I thought of that too <laughs> thought of that too <laughs> I mean, that's kind of on par <laughs> I was like that's my, my brain went but you know, I, I brought it up to my coaches and, and they loved it. And I heard that there was another black swan, only, only one other uh, black mm-hmm. swan here. He's in your uh, Europe for, uh, of New York, but with me, I'm able to still incorporate movements and, and ble- be that, that fluid um, aspect. Mm-hmm. And once that happened, you know, the rest is history. And it it took off and everybody's like oh my god you're you're swan you're the black swan i'm like hi it's me i mean yeah i mean it's i mean i guess you can refer to it as history but it's a very short history it's only been like a year and a half yeah and you've done so much i mean your champion one uh aw dark mission pro um like it's just you you really struck gold with this um this gimmick because it's so original it's mm-hmm. so different than you know what typically what what we've been seeing. Um, it's it's just so outside the box. It's kind of like nothing's new. Everything is just a recreation of something else, right? So you took something from a totally different genre and you applied it, and people now and now obviously we have the movie. It's just it's just the beautiful. It's really a beautiful gimmick. But a year and a half from when you started, and and um, I think also too you said in a couple of your interviews that you weren't a wrestling fan. You're you come from an arts family so when you started you now are in this wrestling universe so what was that like because there's so much just kind of like how we're talking about arts and you know a great promo and all the things all the little nuances that come together to be an indie wrestler and you know again AEW Dark Mission Pro like your trial I saw you in Philly like how did you put all of this together to make up the black swan girl i'm still trying to get all my puzzle pieces together. <laughs> um i feel like i'm at such a disadvantage even though you know people praise that uh or or definitely comment how hard it is to find a gimmick when mm-hmm. you're wrestling but because i didn't grow up with this i feel like i have two decades plus of history that i need to catch up on and mm-hmm. and learn in I've said a couple times that I feel like I am a ballerina in a wrestling costume <laughs> instead of a, a wrestler in with a ballet gimmick. So I am so, I like, my eyes are like saucers with this whole industry and community. And I feel like I'm going up to all the vets. I'm just like, here, my book is empty. Please help me fill it. <laughs> with information but um yeah through through like the year and a half that I've been wrestling it's been 
definitely an eye-opening experience because I've never realized that I would get all of this affirmation and eyes upon me and mind you when I got requested to do AW Dark um, I was completely oblivious of what I'm getting (laughs) involved in (laughs) And I was the first match on Dark as well. And I went against Sky Blue, which phenomenal woman. She is mm-hmm. she's super sweet, super pure. And I, I adore her and all the interactions that we had. But um, I was I was worried as well because I, <laughs> so for AEW Dark, they sent me out to the ring earlier than expected. And I think we were in Fresno and I did some best of the West shows in Fresno. So a few people, mm-hmm. a few fans in the audience, they were like, Black Swan. I'm like, cool, you know me. <laughs> um, but, you know, we were, I was waiting in the ring until Sky came out and all, all the adrenaline was rushing because with dance and everything, yes, you have, you can, you can be in ginormous theaters and, and they can have stories up, but that's One Direction. Right. wrestling you have interaction four walls or Mm -hmm. mostly three walls just looking at you and and seeing like you can't hide at all you are seen every Mm -hmm. every which way and I had a sky came out and I was shaking in my boots internally but you can't you can't show you you can't show when you're on stage you know what you're doing Mm -hmm. but after that happened um I enjoyed my time. I, I got some really good feedback and I got requested to, to come back again against um, Willow Nightingale and I got a royal beating, but I will accept that beating because I... <laughs> <laughs> that's how you learn. Right. <laughs> I was like, I, was, I, I just want to just lay on in the middle of the <laughs> ring. I'm just like, just take me. But, <laughs> but Willow, yeah, Willow, Willa whooped me, but she she is also another beautiful soul that I interacted. Everyone that I've uh, interacted with have been nothing but kind and and generous to me. So I am absolutely grateful for um, that so far. But yeah, I think after AEW, people are just like, oh, like, I saw you on AEW. And in my mind, I didn't see it as much as a a big deal as a lot of people realized because I was still unaware I think I was only three or four months in <laughs> to wrestling when I got requested to to be a part of it so my brain I'm just like oh I'm just here hi guys what are you what can we can I throw you <laughs> um <laughs> but because I got that opportunity I, I got you know a glimpse or a, a little taste of what life can actually be mm-hmm. and it was it was, oh, it was desirable. It was addictive a little bit because I just mm-hmm. I wanted that, just the hearings of, of how you can persuade a whole audience in five minutes, three minutes, 10, maybe 30, or even an hour. Mm-hmm. You, you are guiding them on this journey. And to hear the satisfaction of that is so relaxing and fulfilling because you know that you did it. Um, girl, I forgot, forgot this whole question. I just- oh, no, no, you get no. You, you, it's the the whole experience is is crazy, and the fact that you're, you know, essentially still new into it um, oh is, God. you know, some. It, I think it's a good it's a good thing because you have your training. Your you can pick up things, so that part is not necessarily the hard part, but um, just being able to like soak up everything like it's brand new is really great. And so now has, have you met any like legends or people in the game in particular women who like pulled you aside and said, Hey, this is, this is what you should consider or anything. Was, has anybody given you any advice thus far? Oh, very much so. I think, what's her name? Taylor Hart. I think it was at a meet and greet. I got to talk with her a little bit. Um, who was Hudson Envy? Mm -hmm. She, she, she retired, but, um, I was with my boss, Super Beast, and we were rolling around a little bit, and they were buddies, and she gave me some some very good words of wisdom, because she's been across the seas in Japan for mm-hmm. a, a, a while before she retired, so she got that insight. Um, 
at a meet and greet that I had to do, I got to sit next to Athena and that was oh, nice. She was she was her and she had her belt and I had my belt and we were trying to <laughs> belt up. But um and not a lot of people knew me at, at the meet and greet, but me being next to her, it was a humbling moment because everybody, you know, wanted to, to see her and be with her and mm-hmm. She she has her preppy moments and and you know she's talking but everybody still loves her for it and right I'm just like I want that like I want the line out of door for me just to say hi even though I'll have a 15 minute conversation with each person and I'll be the last person <laughs> to be done but yeah I got that um, Willow has given me some beautiful advice Sky has given me some amazing advice. Um, is there anything in particular that Willow or Sky or Athena said that just kind of like sticks with you? I think the the I would say that the summary of at least every conversation that I've had with any of the talent um, is be true to yourself. That that is a really big thing because they have all informed me, and I'm not oblivious to it e- uh, either. Being in mm-hmm. the theater world that it's hard it is it it can be very challenging and there'll be times that you will question your decisions you will question the people around you and and you'll need that close circle and Mm -hmm. which I completely understand as well I'll be friendly and and I'll greet everyone with open arms but not not a lot of people know you know me me Mm -hmm. um but with it they're like you know there's people in higher authorities that will try to take your storyline and run with it or try to Mm -hmm. change it and if you're not comfortable Mm -hmm. with it you have your own voice you have to speak oh thunder rosa i've had beautiful conversations with her oh thunder rosa this is another one mpw has been great but um yeah it's very much so like if you you have a voice everyone has a voice even if there might be arguments or debates about it, you have your own voice and this mm-hmm. is your life at the end of the day. And I most definitely would rather look back at my life with nothing but happy memories and good decisions than regrets or choices that I was not completely comfortable with that took me to another path. Um, so I think that's been my biggest one. And because my character is it or my gimmick is so much of a character Mm -hmm. I could you know grow my roots any direction that I would like and and go which way that I would and I definitely do get good insight um, especially in this wrestling world of how to persuade myself in that direction or Mm -hmm. find my own path but until then I'm still finding yeah, what I want and, and I mean it's only been it. a year and a half like girl I'm a perfectionist I'm just like get it get, I want I want it now I want to <laughs> figure it out now just give me your brain so I can just mush it with mine so I can understand the psychology well I mean but, it's it's great like, I mean I under, definitely understand where you're coming from at one point I was like that too and then mm-hmm. you realize that you're never going to well you're never going to reach that perfection. Is Charlotte Flair, I believe she did an interview, I think like six or seven months, it might even been a year ago, where she's like, she still looks at matches and was like, ah, I could still do it. Charlotte Flair is doing that. That I mean, like, you know, what what are we doing? Which, which is a good thing. I mean, it's definitely good to, to, to crave the perfection, but then sometimes, um, sometimes you just have to kind of let it, let it be as it is. So, oh you know, Lord. it's kind of finding the balance, what works for you, you know what I'm saying? Very but, much so. Yeah. Can't, I think you're like killing yourself on, on, on that perfection thing. I already had my year crisis. <laughs> I had to go up to my coach because once I hit that year mark, you know, my brain was just like, what are you, what are you doing, Zoe? You, you started wrestling. What is, you've never done this before. question and everything. Like, what? Oh, I was just like, what, what is going on? And my coach reminded me, he's like, you know, it's okay. Like you can have this, this will happen. Maybe like a year one, year three, year five, year 10. So it's normal, but you also have to remind yourself why you 
did in the first place mm-hmm. or like why you keep on going like I did this because I said why not and it is fun because and this is just me being um being an athlete or being a theater kid that you just always want to be better and you always want to get that that perfection and every time you know I um get done with a match I only look or think about what went wrong oh I'm yeah foca- I'm not focused on well that that got a good pop or oh the audience like really or the fans really like that um mm-hmm. and it it consumed me for for a couple months especially when I got close to that year mark because I'm just like I'm not getting better or at least I don't see that I'm getting better and mm-hmm. because I was on dark and people know me I feel like I have this pedestal of like I need to keep on going I need to keep on progressing and show that they do believe in me and I am the chosen one and blah 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 but um especially I I had to reevaluate my brain and I really thought especially with with dance and looking back of of my 20 how old am I 20 20, 21 years Mm -hmm. of dancing that you know it's better to simmer before you boil. And Mm -hmm. I, I definitely have the power of patience and I know that I see everybody thriving and I had that, that quick jump start at the beginning of my career. And now I see it as that's a glimpse Mm -hmm. of, of of a future that I can possess. So I was right now, you know, let's, let's simmer. Let's, 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 let's simmer. Let's, let's cook a little bit, you know, have some, Slow I mean, seasons, you know, just to get the I mean, yeah, let, 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 let it go. I mean, it's it's one of those things like it's, it's a really great era for you to start because you have social media, you have all these apps, you have, you know, you can access pretty much anything everywhere. You know, you have Peacock, ROH has their stuff, TNA, like you can access anything. Um, with that being said, there's a lot to access. So when you are, because you're almost like brand new, you're absorbing all this stuff. Are there certain wrestlers that you kind of, you know, anytime you see them come on, you actually have, you sit down and you watch them. Is there like a certain group of individuals that you're like, I like what she's doing. And, you know, I could see my, you know, parts of myself in her or how, how do you break it down? Because, you know, technically you're behind the eight ball because you haven't watched wrestling up until recently. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll be a part of the band bad uh bandwagon when Rhea comes on I will always watch her um, but I you know I I, I watch Raw and I, I watch Smackdown and I keep I try to keep updated with everything that is going on presently but um I tend to look in the past for for inspiration because that's okay. where you know especially in the attitude era that's when everybody really had a character or they had to present themselves over the top or expressionally. So I try to reference that. Um, I watch a lot of, of Japan. Asuka is one of my favorites. I, mm-hmm. I will always watch her, um, especially when she was in Japan and before she joined the WWE. Um, the great Muda, he is someone that I've watched a couple times because the way he is in the ring, how he is his presence is calm and still, and then he strikes. And that's something that I really want to incorporate into my style. I'm a little tippy toe, you know, twinkle toes right now, but to mm-hmm. have, have that swan elegant, you know, uh, clarity to it, I would love to just absorb that. Um, Taker, he, he's one because of his, his character was so fulfilling. Girl, I flipped with mania. But anyways, um, <laughs> that, that, that was crazy. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, and even Charlotte, uh, a couple of, of her things um, from a couple years back with with her back bends and and her athletics um, athletic, athleticism, um, I like to watch. But it's like the I'll old stuff. That, you go back. Yeah, I'll say mm-hmm. that because I am very much so like get your basics first Mm -hmm. and then you could you could add um your your swirls and yeah and and it's your foundation it's like you have to learn first second and third before you you know go to point like you can't start ballet (laughs) 
<laughs> like, hey, You're already like, give me those shoes. That's, that's forget everything else. <laughs> that's how you sprain your ankle. Don't that do that. <laughs> but even at the beginning of my um with wrestling as well, um Cal Jack, he gave us the the fundam- like the fundamentals of everything. He's like, if you're gonna roll, roll correctly, like mm-hmm. learn how to do an arm drag, learn literally is that because you can look at matches and they may be doing cool things but Mm -hmm. if they don't know how to take an arm drag then it's just like what are you right and then also possible injury too that's oh my word and i think that's one thing that a lot of people have always or not always but i've I've noticed i've been complimented that uh, a lot is my uh transitions Mm -hmm. (laughs) because that was ingrained and it has been ingrained um in my dance life for so long because Mm -hmm. that's what makes a sentence complete you can't have show stop show stop show stop you have to make it the in between Mm -hmm. yeah very much so and um I now now that I I I take that with pride that I have my transitions correctly but yeah I am I'm very big on how do you make the simplest things look big look Mm -hmm. powerful and and creative and memorizing you can have a punch to your face and you can make it look like it's the end of the world right and that's what people want they're here for the entertainment of it Mm -hmm. they they want just to watch a really good story from beginning to end whether it is a whole storyline that is progressed throughout months or five minutes how how do you tell that i'm still trying to learn that yeah it's (laughs) not it's yeah, it's it's a great story. Um, like it, selling is just um, Billy Starks ROH. Like that was crazy because we were in the R. And if you guys don't know what we're talking about, go to ROH and like support. But that was crazy because as an audience, we did not know. Like, wait, should we? Is this this a work? Is this not a work? And and that's to me, that's the best part when you don't know. Um, and you know, obviously, when she got up, it's like, ah, oh, this is definitely because there's no way that if you have a neck injury, <laughs> they're just gonna help you up. So um, you know, it's it's the, the selling part is is definitely um very important. But like like I think we we're referencing through this whole interview, there's just a lot of little things that make up the totality of a wrestler. So for you. Black Swan, Zoe Dubois. How do you like? What is the what is the breakdown of you know your wrestling career? Meaning, like, do you do you book your own shows? Like, you know, do you do you what's your how often do you train? Like, do you do you still do ballet as well? Your shoot job, like, how what the what's the makeup? A week I'm in the a, life of Zoe Dubois. I'm a whole bag of mumble jumble. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm ev- I'm definitely everywhere. So yes, I still uh, dance. I I cannot be Black Swan with with no technique. Um, I am I'm not doing it full time. So I I left. I think this is my first year without. Um, that's not in my uh, professional dance company mm-hmm. because it was it was too much on the body for for doing it um both full time. Oh. But um, I am blessed to say that I get to I'm booked. Almost every weekend, I wow. like to say that there's there's some weekends that I get to breathe and live a normal life. But yeah, mm-hmm. I get I get that opportunity. Um, I am a personal trainer, so there will be times where I will train either my crewmates or some some friends that will help out. Um, I am in school. <laughs> I am. Uh, I just switched my major from physics to business to to help me at least career wise. Um, mm-hmm. How to you know sell my uh, myself and yeah marketing and my um, ideas. Uh, what else am I doing? Dance, wrestling, training. So, do you book yourself, or do are are you at the point now where promotions reach out to you, or is it a combination of both? Um, I am, I, I bashfully say that I have 
been wanting to reach out to promotions. I just don't know what promotions to reach out to. So uh, promoters reach out to me and they're like, hey, we've heard of you. Would you mm-hmm. like to, to come try out? I'm just like, yeah, I have a grandma car. So if, if you can get me out there, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, but because there's so many promotions. There is. So And I there's keep like- on... I think I stumbled on like six of them um, just today. Like, cause you know how Instagram sh- like shows you. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. okay, well, here we are. Right. Let's, or like I, I would get um, a follow from a promotion. I would see that like 17 other people that I know are already mm-hmm. following them. I'm like, oh, I'm late on the bad bandwagon. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's but, crazy. Um, I know there's been a few uh at least requests from my trainers that I should reach out and see if I could get on, which I need to. I don't, I, I'm still learning how to present myself and mm-hmm. sell myself. That's where the um, business comes in. That ooh, business degree will really help. Um, I'm learning so much and it is so much easier than physics. Let me tell oh. you, I am breathing more. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I am letting this career take me in I do want to have tryouts for for WWE or Mm -hmm. or AEW or any of of the big companies but I I think I want to stay in the indies at least a little bit longer so I can get comfortable Mm -hmm. with this universe with this community or at least dive in not only with them but with myself right so then when it is time I'm just like okay I know who I am and how I want to tell you who I am, um, because I'm still so new, um, and I am, I feel so oblivious, but yeah, it's been, it's been a journey of, of people that have, have been reaching out. I get the gratitude of going to uh, Chicago, not Chicago, um, LaSalle, Illinois for Dreamwave and Uprising oh, nice. next week as, as my debut, and I am so stoked because I have not been to Illinois yet I am I'm slowly trying to work my way to to, um the east coast bit by bit so yeah I mean it's it's that's the great thing with having so many promotions like even um you know on the media side of things I've gone to I've gone to states that I probably would never have gone to like no shade to those states but it's like (laughs) I probably would never come here. So it's nice to like, you know, go to different states and, you know, experience the, you know, four to five hours that I have some downtime to see stuff. So it's, it's, it is a, a same like you, like, like my schedule's super busy, but it's nice that you can go somewhere on business. So then it doesn't feel as like, oh, I'm just here, you know, vacationing type thing. I don't know. It's there. just a weird, weird thing. Um, but with that being said, like you have so much going on, like you've done so much in a year and a half. Um, you're only going to grow more. Um, this is only the beginning. Like it's it's absolutely crazy um, for folks who are not following you and or they just might have seen like you some because like your visuals are crazy. They must have seen it, but they haven't put it all together. Where can everybody find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram and or Twitter at Black Swan Dubois, uh, YouTube. You can you can definitely look up Black Swan Dubois. You have to put Dubois, Zoe Dubois, or you will get nothing but ballets <laughs> if you just put Black Swan in it. Um, so that's why I always say like use my name. It's it's a little bit um, easier to find me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, everything that I have for social media is Black Swan Dubois, and I am the one and only. So it will, it's not that hard to find me. There it is. I mean, I look forward to seeing you everywhere. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is TK Trinidad. You can find me everywhere on everything at TK Trinidad. Make sure you follow Women's Wrestling Talk on all the platforms, WW Talk Pod, our website, www.talkpod.com. Thank you guys so much for watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Ciao, y'all. Thanks for joining WWT. Don't forget to like us on all social media platforms at WW Talk Pod. Like and subscribe on all video and audio platforms like yesterday, my G. And check out our website at www.talkpod.com. Thanks for watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling network. 
on the planet. 